welcome, sons of Adam and daughters of Eve. I do hope the trip here was not too much for you. With all that has been happening, I thought I should bend the rules a bit to come out and talk with you. Hmm? What's that? What rules? Why, why the rules of the king. The ones that say I cannot or should not speak because of... Oh dear. I can see this is all a bit confusing, so let me start at the beginning. First, an introduction. I am the white stag, the symbol of good fortune here in Narnia. What? What's that? What's Narnia? Why, why Narnia is all the land that lies between the lamppost and the great castle Caer Parabell in the Eastern Sea. But our story does not begin here or in this time. Our story begins in London in 1940. Great Britain is under attack by Hitler's Luftwaffe in what will become known as the Blitz. The English, who fear for the lives of their children, move them, all of them, from London to the surrounding countryside to live. Have you got everything, Reginald? Extra hankies and your biscuits for the train? Yes, Mum, but I don't want to go. We know, son, but it's for your own good. Now be a big man and get on the train. All right, Dad. Write us every day, love. I will, Mum. Now go on, sweetie. I do hope we are doing the right thing. Of course we are. I don't want to go away. Come on, Lou. Shin up. She'll be back in a flash. I can't wait to go to the country. There might be eagles. There. What do you say to that, Edmund? I don't care. Well, this is it. Be sure to write every day. We will. Look sharp. Don't want to miss the train. And say your prayers and be nice to each other. Our story centers around four of these children. Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. Sent by their parents to live with an old professor, the children soon find themselves in a grand old mansion filled with rooms to explore and adventures to be had. Our story begins in the main drawing room of that mansion. there were children in this house. Uh, go on, my dears. Make yourselves at home. Explore. You'll find a small boat on the lake in the woods and some curious old ruined buildings. It's past that bedtime. Mrs. McCready, our housekeeper, runs the place like clockwork. <laughs> now, Mrs. McCready, the children just got here. Let them be. Yes, sir. Ration books. Have you seen your rooms? No, no sir. sir. Well, then, Mrs. McCready will show you through them. Boys on the hall, eighth door on the left. Girls next to them. Breakfast is at 7.30. Sharp. There may be a fresh hen's egg for you. Not to worry. She's not all that bad. Well, maybe she is. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. 
That professor, he's all right. She's the only one you have to watch out for. There is only one rule in this house. Don't do anything. Oh, come on, Peter. She's not all that bad. No, she's worse. I don't believe that old professor either. I mean, oh no dear. Oh, come off it. Don't go talking like that. Like what? Like mother. It's time you unpack your things. Who are you to say when I should unpack? Go unpack yourself! Don't you too! Everyone stop it! Listen, this is the sort of house where no one's going to mind what we do. They won't hear us, at least. It's about ten minutes walk from here down to the dining room, with any amount of stairs and passages in between. What's that noise? Only a bird, silly. You might find anything in a place like this. Stairs, or... A hawk. Badges. Rabbits. What do you say to a little exploring? Oh, but it's raining. Oh, Ed. But you always look on the dreary side. There's pledges in here. There's the wireless and the library. Oh, there's the library. Quite fine. Peter, you said you want to see the room with all the swords and suits of armor? Well, how about it? All right. But we're all back in time for tea. That gives us... An hour. Oh, good. I can't wait to see the library and the ballroom. Do you want to come, Lou? No. I think I'll visit that big room down the hall. The one with the old wardrobe. Oh, Lucy, don't be a kid. We saw that room when we came in. There's nothing there. I know. But I'd still like to see it. It's not every day you see such a large wardrobe. It's almost as big as my entire room back home. You are an odd one, Lou. If Lucy wants to visit the old wardrobe, she is perfectly entitled to do so. Go on, Lou. Feel free to join us later if you like. All right. Bye. Oh, but please, do be careful, Lucy. Don't get lost or anything on the sword. Susan, stop trying to sound like mother. Well, someone has to watch after you kids when we're here. Come on, Ed. See you later, Mom. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Very funny. Someone has to take Mother's place since she's not here. Lucy! Lucy! Come down to the library with me. It'll be a lot more fun than that wardrobe. <laughs> Lucy! Oh well, I guess she changed her mind. I think our stay here is going to be quite an adventure. Quite an adventure indeed. Each and every morning, oh, we could 
could all use a little good fortune these days. I suppose you are right. As always, Mrs. Beaver. I'm not sure even the white stag could possibly bring enough good fortune. In fact, not even Sir Father Christmas himself could bring enough good fortune if he even still came to Narnia. Oh, my dear, please. Where is that helpful young beaver I fell in love with? Frozen! Frozen by this, this incessant cold weather. <laughs> what? It's not even a normal cold. It's harsh and biting. Makes my teeth hurt. I know, dear. It is strange, isn't it? Strange nothing? We all know who's to blame for this. Remember, there are agents for the White Witch everywhere. Oh, if I just saw one of them, I give them off. You know. <laughs> Don't mind him. Our dam broke last night. It was a damn fine dam. Really, it was. Have you ever tried to keep up a dam in this cold weather? It's not easy. It's not. I know, I know. It's this cold weather. It dries the wood and cracks the mud and it causes leaks and then... Have faith, Mr. Beaver. Centaur. Every sickness has its cure. Sickness. Well, our sickness is about this tall and wears a white gown. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we all know what the problem is. The question we really should be asking is what, my good centaur, is this miracle cure of which you speak? Well, if you must know, <coughs> it's a healthy dose of hope and prayer that our king will soon return. Oh, centaur, I wish I had your faith. But you see, we have been hoping and praying for so very long. I fear that the hope I had lost has drained from me like the life has from Narnia. We do pray, Centaur, just as our parents did and just as their parents did before them, but it, it still comes to no avail. Oh, my dear Beavers, it pains my heart to hear you speak this way. No matter how much sadness we feel in our hearts, we all must continue to have faith. I know you're right, but we have suffered so much for so long. At least we still have each other, I suppose. I agree. Oh! Oh boy! I think we should break out this meeting. We need a hurry. Oh, I think you are correct. Come on, you awful It sounds like the voice of that awful Fenris Oh! Oh, and Thomas the Fog! Oh, that poor child! How did he ever get mixed up with that awful lot? Better bringing her over with me. But whatever the reason, he isn't quite a mess. A mess we will soon be in if that rascal Fen Resolve sees us. Come on, everybody! Oh, farewell, everyone! And please, please don't lose faith! Who was just here? <laughs> what was that flurry of activity? Probably just wind from the blizzard, say. Probably. The enemy! And yet they scattered swiftly on the arrival of. Fenris Ulf, captain of the Queen's secret police. So, Thomas, tell me, why were you late again to your morning post? I just didn't think I needed to be there, sir. Uh, a child of Adam and Eve has never come this way before. But one will come someday, according to the prophecy. Oh. You mean you believe in the prophecy, sir? That is not a your business! What is your business is your job. And your job is to stay here. Keep watch. And if a child of Adam and Eve come by, you are to trap them. In fact, a child of Adam and Eve may come by even today. <coughs> There is a smell of human in the air. And remember, if he comes and you let him escape, you know what the queen will do to you. Turn me to a stone statue? At the very least. Now, I must go check on the other sentinels. Maintain your post! Nave. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Oh, 
dear, oh dear, oh dear. How did I ever get myself into this fix? My father would be so disappointed in me. But wait, if I'm lucky, maybe a human will never come this way. But if one does, I can take it to the queen, and she'll reward me. But that would be wrong, I think. Oh, I'm so perplexed. As usual, I don't know what to do, except what I usually do when I'm perplexed. Play my pipe. <laughs> Dwarf. I'm not a dwarf. I'm a little girl. You mean you are a daughter of Eve? A what? A daughter of Eve. Oh, forgive me. Uh, what is the word? Uh, a human? Well, of course I'm human. Oh, what is your name, daughter of Eve? My name is Lucy. Lucy. Is that considered a nice name? Oh, most certainly. Oh, good. Well, allow me to introduce myself. Franklin Leonardo Theodore Tumnus II, at your service. But if you don't remember all that, you could just call me Tumnus for short. I am a Ford. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Tumnus. <sighs> Tell me, Lucy, daughter of Eve, how have you come into Narnia? Narnia? What's that? What's that? Well, it's this. All the land that lies between the lamppost and the great castle of Herr Pelebel on the Eastern Sea is Narnia. Now, how may I ask, did you get here? Well, you see, it's all very hard to explain. I was, I was exploring with my sister and my two brothers. There are four of you? <coughs> Will the others be coming as well? Uh, I don't know. I'm not even sure how I got here. You see, we were visiting this old house in the country, and I climbed into the wardrobe in the spare room. Wardrobe? Spare room? <laughs> spare room. <laughs> yes. But then I realized there was no back to the wardrobe at all. And then I was here, in... In Narnia. Oh, you'll be glad you came. And I hope the others will find their way here, too, so I can show all of you our beautiful country and introduce you to our lovely witch. Oh, that was a joke. I meant queen. <laughs> Everything seems so magical. Oh, it is. And you can be any way you wish, Inania, quick as a wink. For example, you can take a trip to the distant castle, Cape Pelabel, or the home of the mighty wi our queen. Or you may wish to picnic at the great stone table. Or perhaps you would like to visit the home of two of my forced friends, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver, for example. Or even my own humble abode, Tumnus Towers, I call it. I like fancy names for simple things. It's a fascinating place. Perfect for the imagination. With a little bit of help from the wooden. Hello. There's only one small problem here. Yes? It's just so cold. It was summer a few moments ago. Where I come from, I mean. In the land of spare oom. <laughs> yes. Well, to tell the truth, it's always winter here, Narnia, but, but you'll get used to it, I hope. Meanwhile, why don't we repair to Tumnus Towers for a spot to tea to warm us up? That sounds lovely. I hope it's not too much trouble. Oh, dear. None at all.
Here you are. Thank you. Mm. That's delicious. It is exactly what I needed to warm me up. Oh. I'm so glad I met you, Tomnis. You are such a wonderfully nice fawn. And your music is so lovely. It makes me so warm and sleepy. No! No, 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 what? no, no! What is it? It's not true, it's not true. What's not true? I am not a nice fawn. I'm a very, very bad fawn. Stop it! <laughs> not at all. You are the kindest fawn I have ever met. In fact, you are the only fawn I have ever met. But I'm sure if I'd met any other fawns, they would not be as kind as you. No, I could never be the fawn you speak of. Not when I work for... Her. Her? Who? The White Queen. Ah, oh, witch! Oh, she calls herself a queen, but she's actually the evil ruler of Narnia. You understand? She's the one that always makes it winter here. And to top it off, she never lets us have Christmas! Oh, dear. What kind of work do you do for the queen? Oh, the witch. I'm a kidnapper. I'm supposed to kidnap any human child that may find their way into Narnia and bring them to her. Oh, my. But why? It has something to do with the ancient prophecy. But I'm sure that you are only making her think that you work for her. <laughs> you wouldn't actually do that, <laughs> would you? <laughs> But I am doing it, at this very moment. What do you mean? Well, the team just drank. It was drunk. <laughs> well, don't worry, dear. You didn't drink it all. If you would have, you would have fallen into a deep sleep, and then I would have brought you to her. But you won't, will you, Tomnis? But if I don't bring you to the queen, she'll... She'll... <laughs> she'll what? What will she do? You can tell me. She'll cut off my tail, oh! and then saw off my horns. Oh, dear me. And then, and then, she'll turn me into a stone statue. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 well, well, then she won't know that I was here. Oh, Thomas, stop it. You're scaring me. Won't you please let me go home? Well, of course I do. I guess I'm not such a great kidnapper after all. Oh, Tomnis, don't be sad. I thought you were a fine kidnapper. <laughs> You're not just saying that to make me feel better, are you? Not at all. It's just that I didn't know what a human was like before I met you. But now that I know you, I just, I just can't give you up to the witch. I'll tell you what, I'll take you back to Lampo. From there, you can find your way back to wardrobe in the land of spare. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Thomas! <laughs> <laughs> but we must go as quietly as we can. The woods are full of spikes. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yes. So, Dominus, your treachery has been detected. You had her humor in your very grasp. And you let her go. The queen will deal with you. No, please, Dominus, I beg you, please, please, I'll do anything. I order this house destroy! No! This is my home! You won't be eating it any longer! Betrayer of the Queen! This document will serve notice to any other traitors that may have the same notion as you! Come, Thomas! Soon your name will be written in stone. Oh! Oh! Your very own! No! <laughs> Lucy! No! Lucy! <laughs> You're crazy. It's just a big old wardrobe like any other big old wardrobe. Stuffy and dark and cold. Oh, well, how can this be? It was warm on the wardrobe a moment ago. But don't you see, Ed? We're not in the wardrobe anymore. Well, then, where are we? Narnia! Narnia? I knew you didn't believe me. I wanted to tell Peter and Susan as well, but you were the first one I found, and I wanted to get back here as soon as possible. I guess I can see why. This place is incredible! <coughs> Lucy, I am sorry. I thought you were teasing. That's all right. I didn't really believe it at first either. Now, the first thing we must do is make sure that Thomas is safe. Thomas? The fool! And my friend. I hope the White Witch didn't get him. Oh, um, Lucy, I'm sorry, but I'm not quite sure I heard you correctly. Did you say a witch? Yes, an evil witch. Who uses magic so that it's always winter and never Christmas in Narnia? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, goodbye. <laughs> Come on, Ed! I have to find him! He risks everything to save me. Please. All right. I guess we do owe him. Thank you, Ed! Now, where on earth? I mean in Narnia. His Tumnus is home. I could have sworn it was right over here. We have to find him. I have a better idea. How about you go and look and I'll stay right here. I really have no desire to go traipsing off after some silly fawn. I'll be right here at the lamppost, if I stay. I'm not sure that I like it here. Ed, please don't sleep without me. I'll be right back as soon as I know that Tom is safe. Oh, Narnia, eh? I'll admit I didn't believe Lucy at first, but by God, she was telling the truth. It is a fascinating place, I will admit, but all this business about fawns and witches. Hold there! Tie the reindeer to that tree, dwarf! Yes, Majesty. Consider it done. Now let us follow the scent of the intruder. <laughs> Foretold in the prophecy. 
He looks more like an idiot to me. <laughs> Tell me, boy, how did you happen to enter my dominion? Um, through a wardrobe, Your Majesty. I'm not entirely sure how it happened, but in an instant I was here. A wardrobe? A, a wardrobe? A passageway to the other world, the world of men. Oh, this is horrible. This could ruin everything. This could be the beginning of the prophecy. Unless. Consider it done. Thank you, Your Majesty. Now tell me, my dear boy, are there any more of you humans, I mean, in these parts? Well, yes, I have a sister Lucy who's looking for a farm. Ah, she must be the daughter of Eve that escaped from that fool, Tumnus. Well, Edmund and Lucy, that's only two. The prophecy said there would be four. So there's nothing to worry about. Unless... Edmund, my dear. Yes, Your Majesty? You wouldn't happen to have any other brothers or sisters, do you? Well, yes, there's Peter and Susan. What? Where are they? Tell me now! Still the house where we're staying with the professor! Quiet! Edmund, Lucy, Peter, and Susan. Two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve. For, just as the prophecy has stated, this is horrible! What's wrong, Your Majesty? Oh, nothing's wrong, <laughs> my dear boy. It's just, it's horrible that your dear brother and sisters can't be here with us now. Why, I would take you all to my castle and I would, I would make them the duke and duchesses of this land. But you, my dear boy, since you are so special to me, and since I found you first, I would make you the prince of Narnia. Really? And someday, you would be king. King? Really? You mean it? This is your drink. Smooth, creamy, and delicious. It's marvelous! Oh, and you must have something to eat as well. Tell me, dear Edmund, what is your favorite candy? Well, that's easy. Turkish delight. Well then, Turkish delight it will be. That is the best Turkish delight that I've ever tasted. Can I have some more? Oh, of course. At my castle there are whole rooms full of Turkish delights. Then let's go there, now! Oh, no, dear boy. First you must bring your brother and sisters so you can all be together. I can bring them another time. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> my castle is just between those two hills, see? You'll smell the Turkish delight all along the way. Oh, and Edmund, I want your siblings to be surprised when they see me. So let's keep our meeting our secret, hmm? Don't spare the whip on the rain, dear dwarf! We have much to do in a short time! Turkish delight. Room's filled with it. Glad that she told me she was a queen, otherwise I might have thought she was a witch. <laughs> yes, I will bring Lucy and Peter and Susan to the queen. Edmund, this is horrible! I can't find Thomas anywhere! Oh, well, perhaps we should go and get Peter and Susan and help us look. You really want to? I didn't think you liked it here. Maybe the place does deserve a second look after all. Especially that large castle between the two hills. All right. 
We'll go find Peter and Susan. This time let's get some coats out of the wardrobe. It's cold here. As I told you before, it's all the witch's fault. Oh, Lucy, don't be silly. There's no such thing as a witch in Narnia. You are agile, and you are, you are 
Right. Well, both of you have a point. <laughs> but, but why would they follow me? Well, why would they follow me? A centaur or a unicorn. We're masters in their land. You are a beaver. Hardworking, industrious. But, but I'm not a proper guardian. Oh, oh, love, I believe in you. And now you must believe in yourself. Mr. Beaver, if we are to defeat the White Witch with Aslan, we all must be greater than the sums of our parts. Just a little further. Oh, dear. Now, remember what you are to do. Get them to come with you. Take them somewhere safe. Then guide them to the stone table. And don't get caught. Oh, no, is that all? You can do it. that they think I am. <laughs> I can't let them see me like this, all confused and full of self-doubt. Uh, I better hide until I can get my wits about me. Are you sure this is the way? Now set them to the lamppost. Follow me. Now I am convinced, Peter. Oh my God. Yes. I apologize, Lou, for, for not believing you. So different. Oh, it's so very cold. Silly, that's why we borrowed these coats from the wardrobe. Well, what do we do first? Well, explore, of course. Let's go in that direction. No, it's where the lamp is. That's our landmark. We'll need to find it when we wish to return home. I think we should go home now. It's scary here. Don't be such a goose, Susan. Where's your. Sense of adventure. Whether we decide to save him or not, we must at least try to find poor Tomnis. He did, after all. Let me go. Oh, you tried already. Couldn't even find his house. I could have sworn it was right over here. Look. What is that? It's a message of some kind. <laughs> the former occupant of these premises, Fawn Tomnis. <coughs> is under arrest and awaiting trial for high treason against Her Imperial Majesty, Jadis, Queen of Narnia. Signed, Fenris Old, Captain of the Queen's Police. Long live the Queen. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! 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 Who is this Queen, Lou? She isn't a real Queen at all! She's the horrible witch who uses magic so that it's always winter and never Christmas in Narnia. It really doesn't seem safe here. We should just go home. But we must find Tomnis. He risked everything to get me home. Lou's right. What do you say, Susan? It does sound like the right thing to do. Very well. There is something about this place. Where do we look first? I think that we should get something to eat. <laughs> hey. You're always thinking about your stomach. Well, look at you. You're always thinking about your hair and your clothes and how you look. Well, if I look like you. No, please. Oh, will you two stop it? You're acting like... Like brothers. <laughs> I just wish I knew where Tomnus was being held. Why don't we go to that castle between the two hills? It might be warmer there. Very well. No! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Scaredy cat. Let's go. You can't. Who? Who's there? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Are you the, the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve? We're uh, some of them. Um, please, follow me. We're not safe here. What do you mean? Most of the forest creatures are all friends, but some, some are on her side, if you know what I mean. Come, please, we must go. Wait a minute. Why are we going to follow a beaver? <laughs> Stop being so smug, Ed, and pay attention to the nice. To the nice <coughs> beaver. <laughs> well, how do we know he's a friend? 
I say we head for the castle. Here is my token. My handkerchief! Yes, yes, time to stop it so that we would know to expect you. Now, come, please, we must take you safely to our king. Your king? Aslan! Aslan? Aslan. Why, his very name makes me feel... What, Peter? No, it's too silly. No, it's not, Peter. How does it make you feel? Brave. <laughs> oh, Ow. don't scoff. Many a poor creature's courage has been increased just by the very mention of his name. See, that's how great his power is. I'll admit, name does sound like... like a delightful strain of music to me. It warms me up. It makes me feel like summer. It gives me a bad feeling. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Ed? You've been acting so strangely ever since we've gotten here. Well, how else do you expect me to act in such a strange place? I say we head for the castle. I say we go with Mr. Beaver. I too, and I. Three against one, Ed. Come on. Walk this way. <laughs> Very, very ancient 
prophecy held in the form of a rod. Bought in my rope. Wrong will be right when Adlan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter will meet its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. Who is this man, oh. this, this Aslan that you keep referring to? Oh, darling, Aslan is not a man. No, no, he is king of the wood and son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Why, if this Aslan character of yours isn't a man, then what is he? Why, he's a lion. The great lion. Well, that's very nice, but what does this have to do with us? Recently, word has come that Aslan has returned. If that is true, then the first part of the prophecy has come true, and the second part of the prophecy is ready to be fulfilled. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bone sit at care parallel in the throne, then the evil time shall be over and done. What does that mean? Adam's flesh and Adam's bone? It means humans. You see, you are the first humans ever to come to Narnia. Well, what about the queen and her dwarf? Aren't they human? Oh, darling, you mean the witch and her dwarf. No, no. You see, she'd like you to believe that they are human, but they're not. They are evil through and through. Not a drop of human blood in them. Now, wait. What's this care paravel? The place with the thrones. Why, that is where you will reign. There are four thrones waiting for you. And once you take your place there, the witch's reign will be over and so will her life. Two sons of Adam, two daughters of Eve. Two and two. You are the four. Well, that is an awful lot of responsibility. We are just children. Are you sure we are the ones? Oh, yes! Whether or not you are truly ready, you must do this. Our land and all who are in it will be lost if you don't. As a, as a wise lady once said to me, all you have to do is believe in yourself. Oh, dear. I love you. And I are you. I am sorry that I yelled at you before. <laughs> <laughs> But I, for one, am ready. I, too. Well, <coughs> somebody has to watch after you two. I guess I'm ready also. And you, Ed? 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 Ed! 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 Oh, dear. Where could he have gone? Uh, perhaps to get some air? Do you think he became ill? He hasn't looked well since the was in here. Wait a minute. Ed mentioned the witch. And also a dwarf. We knew nothing of a dwarf. Is there actually such a person in Narnia? Well, yes, but I wouldn't call him a person. That means Ed has met them. And eaten her food, no doubt. Who? Oh, they did have that look about him. Yes, they did. I'm sorry I didn't realize it sooner. I guess I was just so excited to see humans here. What look? What's wrong with Edmund? Yes, please tell us. Well... I suppose we'll have to. If he ate any of the witch's food or, or drank anything that she gave him, he is now under her spell. Under a spell? To be sure. Oh, I'm so sorry. You have to realize anything he says or does is not under his control. It's under hers. He's probably halfway to a castle by now. Well, then we've got to do something. Stop him before he gets there. Absolutely, end of the question. You must not go anywhere near the way to her castle. But we have to get Ed back. Yes, we must. Mr. Bieber, didn't you say that all four of us were needed to fulfill the prophecy? Yes, yes, that is true. But if it is true that Aslan has returned, then we must reach him. He, he will know what to do for your brother. Oh, darling, you sounded so spiritual just then. Oh, I did. Well, then we've got to get going. Yes, yes, we must. <laughs> no! It's just that it's getting so dark out. And once the sun sets, the witch's minions come out. Oh, couldn't you wait till tomorrow? We
when Edwin tells the witch that the others are here, this will be the first place to look for them. And us! We must leave as soon as possible. Is the place all right? Oh, is that? I'm afraid so, my young friends. Minions! Oh, There's no time for escape. Be brave, young friends. sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve. That's us. But I only see one son of Adam here. Our, our brother Edmund has fallen under the spell of the White Witch. Oh my, then my arrival could not have been more opportune. Come closer, son of Adam and daughters of Eve. Receive your gifts. You too, Mr. Beaver, Mrs. Beaver. First, Mr. Beaver. I have repaired your dam and mended the leak. What? <laughs> a, a simple thank you would suffice. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> and Mrs. Beaver, in the room next to the smokehouse, I have left for you a brand new sewing machine. Oh, oh, oh. What he said? Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Oh. Peter, son of Adam. Yes, sir? <laughs> These are your gifts. They are tools, not toys. The sword and the shield are yours. Bear them well, and know that the power of righteousness is behind you. Thank you, sir. Susan, daughter of Eve, <coughs> these are yours. The bow is made from the hardest wood, and the string from the tail has of a unicorn. Now the arrows, once you loose them, they will hit wherever your heart and mind guide them. Blow this horn whenever you are in trouble, and help will come to you. Thank you, sir. Lucy, youngest daughter of Eve. In this bottle is a cordial made from the juice of the fire flower. If you or your friends are ever hurt in battle, a few drops will restore you. Use this dagger to defend yourself, but only when absolutely necessary. Thank you, Father Christmas. You're welcome. You are all welcome. Well, we must be on our way. We have many more stops to make this night. But before I go, remember this. Your greatest strength is your love for one another. Be wary of the witch, for she will try to use that against you. Stay strong, and above all, remember that we are all with you. Good night. And long live the one true king! Long live, live the, the king. king! We too must be on our way. We must travel quietly and cautiously. 
The witch's spies are everywhere. Come, let us go. He wouldn't have turned them into stone. She certainly was nice to me. Well, I'm sure the others were like the Queen. She said that she would make Peter a Duke and Lucy and Susan duchesses. But I'll be the Prince. And one day, the King. <laughs> them to you after they've been to Aslan. Ah! <laughs> Never speak that name in my presence again. Ah, yes, Your Majesty. So he has returned then, has he? Perhaps. It's only a rumor, Your Majesty. No, no, it must be true. Everything is starting to feel warmer. Even the snow in the fields is beginning to melt. Where are your brothers and sisters now? They are at the home of the beavers, Your Majesty. Early in the morning tomorrow, they are going to set out to the stone table in order to meet Dad and to meet him. We must capture the children before they reach that creature. Capture? But why? Silence! I shall never allow the prophecy to come true. Dwarf, make ready the sleigh for our journey. Your Majesty, I'm afraid we'll have to walk. A reindeer cannot travel without snow. Uh, they'll sink into the mud. Very well. Then we shall go on foot. Penresolf, chief of my secret police, you are the fleetest in all of my arms. Go ahead of us. Overtake the humans before they reach the stone table. Kill anything! No! Especially those beavers for harboring the enemy. Kill? I hear and obey, my queen. Dwarf, bind the hands of this human and drive them ahead of us with your whip. Now, wait a minute! With pleasure, Your Majesty! Why, Your Majesty! Silence! But they are my sisters and my brother! And now, they are my victims! Dwarf, gag him so I don't have to listen to this nonsense anymore! Away! <laughs> Let's play. 
see anyone. Look! It's a kingfisher! Oh, Lou. Don't scare us. this witch has placed here. I don't understand. As humans, you are at your best when things are at their worst. That is the power that you, your brother, and your sisters yield. But don't all four of us have to sit together? Yes. Then what about Edmund? What if the White Witch? Your sister's horn. Father Christmas told her to blow it only when there is trouble. Something dreadful must be. Ah! What is it, Susan? A monster! He's coming this way! He's right behind! Can you tell who or, or what it was? It looks to be! I'm afraid it is! That was all from the oh, of the police! Will you protect us from the last man? No! Oh, Peter, oh. but you will! Me? Stand back! Let the prince win his spurs! Oh. Oh. Well, well, well! So the mighty Aslan has returned! My queen will be interested in this news. But, before I go, would I might a pussy cat like to test me strength? <laughs> oh, are you so afraid of Fenris Ulf that you designate a mere mortal to fight in your steed? Where hell? I shall make short work of him, just as my queen's army will dispatch of you and your cowardly crew. Don't be afraid, son of Adam.
that all of you can follow him. What? And rescue the other son of Adam. Oh, do not fear. Your strength will be in your numbers, and your faith will accomplish the task. The children will stay here with me. You have forgotten Queen your soul. Now hand it to me and kneel, son of Adam. Rise up, Peter Fenris Bane. Your new name will tell the world that you were the destroyer of the evil wolf. Always maintain your courage. Whatever happens. Yes, our son. And now let us go to yon pavilion, where we will await the others. If all goes well, they will return with your brother.
About 15 minutes should do. So I bid you goodbye, and I will see you then. that I grant her safe conduct. What? On condition that she leaves her staff at that great oak. Therefore, she can play no magical tricks. The magic she plans requires no tricks. What did you say? I will convey such information to my queen. Please, Aslan, don't let her near us. Fear not, Edmund. You, your brother, and your sisters will be safe. I will see to that. What is your business here, Janus? You have a traitor there, Aslan. His offense is not against you. Have you forgotten the deep magic? Tell me of it. Tell you? Tell you what is written on that very table of stone from whence you came? You know the magic that the Emperor put into Narnia at the beginning of time. You know that every traitor belongs to me. And for every treachery, I hold the right to kill. <laughs> and so that human traitor is mine. His life is forfeit to me. His blood is my property. Come and take him then. Peace. Fools. Did you really think that you could take away my rights by mere force? Your master knows what is written. He knows that unless the laws are obeyed, all of Narnia will perish in fire and water. <laughs> it is true. I do not deny it. Oh, Aslan, can't we do something about the deep magic? Isn't there something we can work against it? 
Not against the Emperor's magic. But I will speak to the witch. You mean the Queen! Shut up, you cunt! Fall back, <laughs> all of you! I will speak with her alone, Jadis. Oh, Edmund. Why did we ever leave that wardrobe? Believe me, I wish we could go back. There is no going back. Not for any of us now. This suspense is awful. What are they talking about? Can Aslan really save the boy? If anything is to be done, Aslan will think of it. The matter has been settled. The witch has renounced the claim on your brother's blood. That <gasps> Edmund is free! <laughs> But your majesty! Force, the time is at hand. Summon our forces. One more thing. How do I know your promise will be kept? You know that when Aslan makes a promise, it will be kept. Leave! Do not be concerned for that. Now all of you, you must go at once. Go to the fields of Beruna. There you shall be packed tonight. Are you not coming with us, Aslan? I am needed elsewhere, Peter. Yes. The witch has business in these parts. And when she is finished, you must be prepared for anything. Perhaps even a battle for your very lives. <laughs> you will be there to help us. I cannot promise that, Peter. Now please go everyone and get a good night's rest. You must be ready for whatever tomorrow may bring. Please, go at once.
collection of swill and fallen armor and kill them all! My dear Aslan, despair and die! Aslan is mine! The victory is mine and now all of Narnia is mine! Follow me, my minions, that are set about to finish the remains of this war by wiping those pitiful rebels from Narnia. It will not take long now that the great cat, the great fool, lies dead! <laughs> from a time, a time before time itself. A law, another law was written, saying that when a willing victim who commits no treachery, like you, like me, is killed in the place of a traitor, like Edmund, like Edmund, then the table will crack and death itself will start working backward. Like now! Like now, oh children, I can feel the strength coming back in me already. But now, now is the time to prepare for our last battle against the witch and her evil forces. We must hurry, Aslan. The witch and her army are already on the march for the others. Then we shall add more soldiers to our own army. But who else will join us? Our friends are waiting us at the witch's castle. But what are they doing there? Well, nothing at the moment. They are stone statues. But 
I will breathe the breath of life into them, and they will be made whole again. Aslan, do you suppose that Tomnus is there? Was he an enemy of the witch? Yes, because of me. Then I am certain he is there. Oh, wonderful! I can't wait to see him again. Oh, you will, Lucy, you will. Now take my paws. We must move to the witch's castle and rescue our awaiting friends. Away, let's go! down on these fields wondering how we're going to defeat the witch. Well, Aslan said. I know what Aslan said, but I don't see him here. I know. I sort of noticed that also. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Ed. I am too. Sorry that I ever got you and the girls mixed up in all this. Don't worry about that. But by the way, where are the girls? I don't know. I haven't seen them all morning. Good morning, Peter. Edwin. Hello. Good morning, Mrs. Beaver. Mr. Beaver. Good morning. Uh, the others are stirring, but uh, no one really seems to know quite what to do next. We need to find our son to ask him for his guidance. What was that? Yes! Edmund is right! I know that you are the stair, but enough is enough! How long have you lived under this yoke of evil? How many of you have had loved ones turned to stone under the hand of the witch? Well, I say, her time is finished! It is time for the rightful king to rule again, and for peace to come to Narnia! I stand here for you, ready to give my life for you! You don't stand alone, brother. I stand here with you, and for all of you. <coughs> then, brother, take this dagger. If this is to be our last day, let it be marked with valor and honor. Now into your places, and let the spirit of Aslan be with you all! Ha!
myself. It's nothing. I was just hoping that Thomas would be among you. I thought I saw Aslan bring him back to life. As did I. But yet he is not here. I feel that I will never see him again. Oh, you will, Lucy. You will. <coughs> Peter! You are to be commended! You fought very well against the witch. <laughs> Edmund is the real hero. If you had not distracted the witch, she'd have turned us all into stone. <laughs> Things I could do after all the wrong I had done. Oh, Edmund, all have done wrong in one time or another, but to acknowledge your error and try to do better, that is the best way to right the wrong. And that is what you have done here today, Edmund! <laughs> but Aslan, what of the witch's army? Are we still in danger of them? They will be less powerful now that their leader is dead. But they will always be about, lurking in forbidden corners. So you must always be aware and be on your guard. Yes, Aslan! And now, the only duty remaining is to crown the new rulers of Narnia! <laughs> I wish we could do it on this very ground that good has triumphed over evil. But we must move to Cape Caravan. There the four crowns reside. No, they're not, Lord Aslan, they're here! <laughs> After you freed me from the witch's spell, I ran to Cape Caravan as fast as my wounds would carry me so I could get the crowns. I hoped that they would be needed here. Well, I suspect that you wanted to avoid the battle with the witch. <laughs> well, what good would avoid me in a fight? I am known as Thomas the Trembler, not Thomas the Terrible. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Thomas, whatever the moment. And now, let the coronation begin! <laughs> stay for long, for I've had many other tasks before, beginning with this. Wood nymphs, return the lamppost to its proper place in the forest. The children will rule for a very, very long time, but there will come a time when they need to return from whence they came. That lamppost will be their guard. Just as we all do. 
Well, goodbye, Thomas. I have chores to do. Goodbye, Mr. Beaver. As do I. Dams to build and leaks to fix. And I have tools to play. Goodbye, Mr. Beaver. Pursued a nobler quarry. Where did she go? I do believe she went into yon thicket. Very dense thicket, filled with briars and underbrush. Looks impassable. Nonsense, brother. We are the kings and queens of Narnia. We never turn back. Our brother is correct. If we are to pursue the stag further, we should remove our robes and our crowns unless they get damaged when we enter the thicket. Quite right, Susan. We'll leave them here until we return. Seems strangely familiar to me. Yet. What? Yet I can't help but feel that we've been here before. Sometime long ago. Seems almost as if in a dream. Yes, Edmund. I have the same feeling. It almost seems as if. as if a grand adventure lies on the other side of it. Well then, as kings and queens of Narnia and in the name of Aslan, let us take that adventure. Agreed. Oh. Well, wait for us! <laughs> Brother, that lamppost, it does seem so familiar. I feel it too, but I can't recall ever seeing it before. Edmund, where are we? You are in a thicket, of course! No, no, we're not! We're in some sort of. It's a. a what? A wardrobe! A wardrobe? A wardrobe! Oh my! I had nearly forgotten about it. As did I. The room hasn't changed at all! And the frogs have hardly moved! Hurry up, you two! We might still be in time for dinner! <laughs> <laughs> it must. It must be time for us to leave now. I suppose it is. Peter? Yes? Do you think we'll ever find our way back to Narnia again? If we are lucky, Susan. We are very, very lucky. Yes. The children will return someday. Perhaps not through the wardrobe, though. There are many paths to Narnia. Yes, they will return. For once a king, always a king. Once a queen, always a queen. It is important that they return. For good people need good rulers. And good rulers need good people. That is perhaps the deepest magic of all. <laughs>